For me, these are by far the best laptops that have come out in 2021. The Surface Laptop Studio totally changed the way that content creators approach projects. And the M1 Max laptops, on the other hand, are the most powerful laptops we've ever seen. In today's video, we stack them up against each other in 10 categories to see who comes out on top in the ultimate showdown of 2021. Design is just as important as performance, in my opinion, for a ton of reasons. And it's first up on the list. When we put these next to each other, you can see that both are very special in their own way. The M1 Max has a similar design that hasn't changed much over the years, with this particular spec coming in a new solid squared off form factor. The Surface Laptop Studio has a serious advantage here. It could fold into a tablet, 45 degree angle, completely fold the other way to get rid of that keyboard and trackpad. It has a touch screen and a stylus pen. So in this particular instance for this first category, when it comes to design, the first point gets awarded to the Surface Laptop Studio. Next up on our list is ports. Now Apple redeemed themselves this year, bringing back that MagSafe charger and the HDMI port, while also sporting a headphone jack, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a slot for an SD card. This thing means business. The Surface Studio, on the other hand, only gets you two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a headphone jack, and a port for charging, leaving the M1 Max on top for this category. Making our way towards displays, the Surface Laptop Studio has a foldable touchscreen display with 120 hertz for its refresh rate, similar to what you see on the M1 Max. However, the M1 Max does not have a foldable touchscreen. Resolution is set to 2400 by 1600, giving you 201 pixels per inch, while the new M1 Max gives us a 3024 by 1964 liquid Retina XDR display that houses 254 pixels per inch, much higher. The screen on the M1 Max also has noticeably less glare in comparison to the Surface Studio, while also sporting much better color accuracy. Not to mention you get a peak brightness of over 1500 nits on the M1 Max versus the 500 nits of max brightness that you get on the Surface Laptop Studio. Even though it isn't a touchscreen, the clear winner here is the M1 Max. When it comes to weight, the M1 Max weighs just under three and a half pounds versus the four pounds that you get with that Surface Laptop Studio thanks to its 3050 Ti graphics card. So in this particular comparison, the M1 Max gets the point and it wins, it's over a half pound lighter than the Surface Laptop Studio. Now when it comes to storage and RAM, you get up to 32 gigabytes and two terabytes of storage with the Surface Laptop Studio in comparison to a whopping eight terabytes and 64 gigs of RAM with the M1 Max. So in this particular instance, when it comes to those two options, the clear winner here is the M1 Max. Don't worry, future bench scores and render tests are coming up. With stacking up the webcams, microphones, and connectivity, both come equipped with Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and 5.0, along with 1080p webcams that work great. Now, each laptop also has a decent built-in microphone, and they both also have super similar trackpads as well as smooth keyboards. So in this particular category, it ends up being a tie. When it comes to audio, my God, are these laptops loud. You get quad omnisonic speakers with Dolby Atmos support on the Surface Laptop Studio and a new six speaker sound system with four canceling woofers on the M1 Max that gives you up to 80% more bass than before. Let's compare them. I want you guys to let me know down below in the comment section which one of these you guys think sounds the best. <laughs> So here's the thing guys, the Surface Laptop Studio sounds a little bit louder, but the M1 Max sounds much more rich when it comes to sound quality. Either way, let me know down below in the comment section which one you guys think sounded the best between these two. Now both of these are plugged in to give maximum performance in these tests, which the Surface gives a noticeably less powerful difference if it's not plugged in. But the battery life is up to 18 hours on the Surface, whereas on the M1 Max you get up to 17 hours. However, I noticed that if I'm doing a ton of editing, tasks running in the background, a whole bunch of applications opened up, I got only four and a half hours with the Surface Laptop Studio in comparison to about six hours on the M1 Max. When it comes to regular everyday use and I'm not editing, I get about 10 hours on the Surface Laptop Studio and almost 14 hours on the M1 Max. So when it comes to battery life in this comparison, the M1 Max is the winner again and it gets another point. For price points, the M1 Max starts at 3100 bucks for the base 24 core GPU and 10 core CPU, whereas the Surface Laptop Studio starts at 1599 for the i5 model with no GPU. Now, I won't be giving a point here to either since this is all relevant to your workflow and what you really need, but it's worth noting that the M1 Max has almost double the starting price point. Now, if you go for the eight core M1 Pro, you start off at 1999, which is much more reasonable. Now, software is funny here and subjective. You got Windows 11 versus Mac OS Monterey. To each their own, they're absolutely fantastic. I use both for some of the same things and some different things. I have no complaints with either operating system, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to personal preference. So this particular category ends up in a tie. Unless, unless there's a point here, if you are part of the Apple ecosystem, you have an iPhone, iPad, stuff like that, it is much easier to transfer files with the M1 Max. So you might get dragged forward to the M1 Max. 
But other than that, it all comes down to personal preference and this category ends up being a tie. Next up, we're running a multitude of tests to see how both of these machines handled pressure and heavy workloads. We'll start off with Geekbench scores. Surface Laptop Studio came in with the Geekbench multi-core score of 5309 versus the 11828 that you got on the M1 Max, which is expected. Both, however, were trailing in comparison to my custom-built 5950X desktop PC that did clock in at 13,631 for its multi-core score. Now, it's not exactly a fair matchup between both of these laptops, but I will note that these are both their max spec models that you could pick up in their prospective lineups, aside from storage, on the M1 Max. You got 32 gigs of RAM with an 11th gen i7 and a 3050 Ti with the Surface Studio. You have a 32 core GPU, 10 core CPU, and 64 gigs of RAM on the M1 Max. The scary part here is the M1 Max significantly outperformed my new desktop PC that has a Ryzen 5950X and a 3080 Ti. As we see here in comparisons between the three, exporting this 422 10-bit Sony a7S III footage, you can see just how powerful this M1 Max really is. The Surface Laptop Studio rendered out this heavy timeline in just over 9 minutes and 35 seconds. Desktop PC did it in 6 minutes, 12 seconds, and the M1 Max finished the export in a mind-blowing 4 minutes, 2 seconds. The timeline had a ton of transitions, color grading, LUTs, cuts, animations, graphics, transitions, anything you could possibly think of, I threw it at this M1 Max. I even threw three or four videos on that same timeline and it completely tore it apart. I couldn't believe it. Next test is our PJ Benchmark 4 Premiere Pro where you could see once again the M1 Max completely annihilated the Surface Laptop Studio's 417 result with a score of 1154 and slightly outperform my desktop PC once again that came in at 1011 for its benchmark score. The Puget Bench test covers the whole story. Live playback, rendering time, multi-cam performance, CPU-based effects, GPU-based effects, I mean everything. The clear winner here is the M1 Max and it's not even close. Not to mention the fans never even seem to kick on for the M1 Max in these tests, which is completely insane. Now, our final tally here is the Surface Laptop won one category, the M1 Max won seven categories, and two categories ended up being a tie. However, I would like to reiterate that the M1 Max does almost have double the starting price. And pricing plays a key role here. The Surface Laptop Studio and the M1 Max are two completely different devices made for different kinds of creators. Despite both having amazing software, each offer different builds, capabilities, and features. These tests were provided to help making the decision somewhat easier for you. But at the end of the day, we know the M1 Max is in its own league and it's honestly overkill for 98% of content creators out there. So it's gonna be up to you to decide, especially if you're on a budget. Which one are you rocking with and why? Make sure you let me know down below where you'll also find links to everything that we covered in today's video. If you wanna see more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.